Hi, everyone, and welcome back to Creative Design. I can't believe, oh my goodness, my sound is going crazy on my other, on my other screen. Okay, let's start that over. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here, and welcome back to Creative Design. This is a whole new season, which means a whole new project, whole new everything, new year, new you, new design assets, new design everything, new creativity. Let's just dive right into it because... It's going to be different from the last season where it's a bit more, the project that we will be exploring is a little bit mature if you want, but there is something for everybody. So let's dive right into it. And oh yeah, I should maybe introduce myself, right? So I'm Izzy, I'm a brand designer from Ottawa, Canada, and I am ready to rock. And I know I am a bit nervous because I know that it was Erin Draplin that was right before me. So I'm gonna try to keep up the energy for all of you. <laughs> all right, so before we get started, I wanna say that if you want the chance to win a fabulous zine, um, if you stick till the end of this stream, I'm gonna give you a prompt word to add in the chat and you have the chance to win this wonderful zine. It is almost 200 pages, a lot of other creatives, are in here, great source of inspiration, and it's just beautiful. And there's only 300 copies, so there's not a lot out there. But yes, okay, I have taught you enough. Let's get started. So for those of you who doesn't know what is a zine, if you are new to this show, a zine is a small circulation publication, and it started a little while ago. It was really much like uh, magazine cutouts and collages, then it was photocopied and distributed. There was a lot of it for like social and political movements. And then it caught on with the design and art scene and it grew on and it it's, it's its whole culture. So if you're new to it, I'd invite you to have a look into it. The new project that we're going to do. Okay. It's a little complicated, but hear me out. And if you have some questions, I'm seeing you in the chat, so you can feel free to stop me and just ask away. So the title of the new zine will be Composition Decomposed. And in there, we will be looking into all of the principles of designing or creating an artwork. The principle is like balance, rhythm, unity. So basically what makes a good composition? Why is it compelling? to look at something, right? And in order to do that, um, oh yeah, I have created a mood board for all of you. So it's not going to be the ones that you can fold at home. This is going to be a real publishing um, a book, basically. And here are some descriptions of the seven principles. And we're also going to look at the elements because there is a difference between composition and elements. Basically the compositions is the theory and the elements is the what. So you're gonna play with color, with space and with shapes and, and so on. But what can you do for images that is different than what we have seen before? And that is the challenge that I gave myself. I wanted to reinvent that. And of course, because we have AI tools at our disposals, I gave myself a big challenge. And we are about to break Firefly. <laughs> Not literally, but we're going to learn a whole new way of using Firefly to create something that is truly unique. Something that is definitely your creation. Because there is a new feature in Firefly, which is you can remix images. And I'm going to show you. So let's hop right now into Firefly. And we are going here to text to image, generate. And I don't wanna be doing the real prompts where you actually describe something like this here. I actually wanted to see what can Firefly do if I added the description of the principle itself. So I have a document right here and Let's play with contrast first. I'm going to copy that and add it right here. Just to start, just to see what it can do. 
And while it loads, I have to say hello to all of my friends in the chat. So I'm seeing Kristen. Thank you so much. Hi, Monica. Hi, PJ. Hi, Misty. Hi, Patrick. Hi, Deborah. Hi, Rob. Hi, Oliver. Curtis. Oh, my goodness. It's a full house today. Thank you so much for being here. Hi, CJ. Hi, Jack. Omicorn. Seeing some uh, names that are recurring here, and I love to see all of you. Okay, so as the results, it's it's not bad but it's not necessarily screaming contrast to me right i'm trying to illustrate what contrast means which is hard so i'm going to adjust a little bit of the prompts that we have on the site here first of all i know that i want my book if i go back to my mood board right here basically everything is portrait um and I know it's a it's a it's going to be a perfect bound uh no sorry saddle stitch book, um and I'm going to have to change the format of my images so I know that it fits everything perfectly. I could do portrait, but I want to give myself the options of doing landscape as well. Like I, so I'm going to decide like to choose landscape. Now, again, going back to the mood board, I'm seeing a lot of photos and something like with AI, there is kind of that finish that we see a lot that is that glossy and um, not fake. I hate using that term, but it's um, you can tell that it's AI generated. So for that, I want to click on photo. And if you go at the bottom, you can also select hyper realistic. By the way, before I continue, I should mention that I am in Firefly Image 2. This is new, and this is here that you can choose your model. So let's try this just with these new parameters that we have added. PJ, I'm not sure I understand your question. If you want to give me a bit more details, then I can answer it. So it gave us something um, that is very similar. I'm still not happy with the results. And this is something that I have already seen. And for this zine, I'm trying to achieve a result that is my own. So I don't know if you've seen this new feature here, upload your image, which is a whole game changer. So <clears throat> if we go back to my presentation here, which you can actually access and download, there is a link in the description. I had previously made a another zine with just collages. And again, if I looked back at my mood board, I feel like this aesthetic would work really well with what I'm trying to achieve. I actually have a nice animation for you so you can see some of the pages here. It's basically a whole collage. It has no composition whatsoever. It's just everything is added on a page. And I had so much fun breaking the rules of composition, but, I want to basically do the opposite of that zine, but use it as a reference. And now I can do this because I can click here, upload your image. And I have, oh, sorry, it's loading. There you go. All the scans of my zines right here. I'm going to pick this one. And then it says, by offering an image, basically we can get like better results. Makes sense. Oh, thank you so much, Patricia. <laughs> that is really nice. And then I'm see, you can see the style reference that is appearing at the bottom here. And let's click generate. And while we wait, just going to sip, take a sip of water. See right there, it's very different, but it's still necess not necessarily the type of 
results that I want to achieve. So I'm going to look here at my prompt and see and remove the words that I that maybe is giving the motor <laughs> of AI to give me those results. So I think here with the word focus and emphasis, that's why it's it's saying, oh, it's someone looking because it, it has to focus on it. So I'm going to remove that part. I'm going to add because it likes quantitative. Anything that is quantitative is good for a prompt. So I can say massive contrast. And I can say big difference. Again, emphasizing between elements. This is a full sentence, so it's not understanding this. That's OK. We're exploring here. And we can say difference between, the, well, it understand color, value, texture. We can remove or here, negative and positive space, it probably does not understand. I mean, it kind of did here, which always surprises me. And then we can maybe add a few words here. We can say um, black, because I black and white. Maybe we can add uh, I'm trying to think on the spot here. Let's actually just start with this and see what it does. And PJs. Uh, Yes, uh, PJ. So basically, uh, when you fold pages for saddle stitch, the center pages uh, just out past the cover. So the pages does a face trim uh, so that when there's in close, like there's it's all cut evenly. Yes. And basically, this is like something that you could work with your printer like to know I think this happens often when there's a lot of pages uh, depending on how many pages that you have you might not have to do this like if it's a thin zine then the the folding is okay um, but again talk to your printer they, they're usually really good they're going to give you the dimensions for whatever if you're wanting to go that route in printing professionally um, Rob is asking me, is my background traditional magazine layout? And no, actually, my background is art. So I actually transitioned to design um, after graduating when I wasn't sure what I wanted to do because I had a visual arts teacher and like my parents, both my parents are teachers. And then my mom inviting me to a field trip at the museum and I hated it. <laughs> So I had to had a good conversation with myself and change the course of my of my career. And here we are today. Design was was the choice and I could mix art and design. And this is actually the perfect project that you'll see my art background coming into the content of this um, zine, which is going to be so fun. OK, so I had prepared a prompt that has worked. And that's the beauty with AI, you never know what you can have. So it is a lot of exper experimentation, but here, uh, massive difference in contracts, unbalance between elements, emphasis and focus, variation in color, value, texture, or shape. I did keep negative and positive faith, uh, space, complementary color, abstract. Abstract is very important here because this is the type of images that I'm trying to get. Collage style. And black and white and let's see what we get with this oh thank you so much <laughs> rob for saying this and good afternoon to you too gustavo okay let's see there's always that mini weight with <laughs> adobe firefly so you might see me dancing and this is the firefly dance okay still not what i want to get but we're getting somewhere i'm going to remove the black and white
And maybe this is also because the reference that I have is very much black and white, but I'm trying to have just a bit of color, just like some hints here. I'm going to maybe put abstract at the beginning. Okay, this type of image here is the type of image that I want. It's not giving me contrast per se. Like if I wanted to talk about the principle itself, but it's very interesting. And if it weren't from the reference that I gave Firefly, it would not have gotten this result. So I'm going to like this and download it for future reference. I'm building the bank of basically images for our next zine. That's what we're doing today. I'm going to remove, I want to see what happens if I remove this, the reference and if I add something else that has maybe different composition like this one. And let's see what happens. Oh, PJ, 12 years in print shop experience. So I ask questions to remind myself of uh, features and print issues and solution. This is great. This is a great idea, PJ. Okay, this is starting to get very interesting. What do you think in the chat? Like, what do you think about like those results? Um, how are we liking it? Because I think that we can definitely use this and do something with it. So I'm just going to like and download all of these results really. And what it does when you like it, it actually adds it to a library, which is awesome. Cause you can go back to it after. And I'm just going to refresh and regenerate just to see what it does. And this is all part of the process, right? And what I like about this process here when using my own collage is that I know that I'm referencing something that I have created myself. And it is changed in a way um, that you don't necessarily recognize even like the, like the magazines that I have used. So, um, now we can use Adobe Firefly images for commercial use, but sometimes like I know for some of you, it might be still like um, an ethical thing, but by doing this, you're sure that the results that you have is going to be very unique because if it weren't from the, the, the start, the reference, and then your prompts, it's all you who is iterating this image and you can still continue to do so with other apps which we're going to explore in a few moments can you make uh, your sample image bigger i mean what hi elizabeth so elizabeth yes basically when you download it um it, it's actually in high resolution it's quite good um, but let's actually explore this one i'm just going to download it because i really like this and we can click here on edit and we can use the generated fill and you can edit it. So here, let's say I don't like the rounded elements that we have here. I can, it's already to like add, I can actually just go over it like so. Just going to do it all because I don't want to have some bits and pieces that are left. I mean, having the rounded elements in this composition did work for contrast, but that's okay. We have downloaded the, the previous version, so that's okay. And then we can actually describe here what we want to generate, but I, I'm just going to click generate to see what it does. And again, that Adobe Firefly weight dance. 
my computer is doing a lot at the same time. <laughs> so sometimes it does take a bit of time. So this is actually quite interesting that it did this and it gives you just like generated fill in Photoshop, it gives you more options that you can choose to keep. And if you want to see more, you can just click that more button right here. Can we wait? Elizabeth, yeah, great workaround for ethics, starting with your own creation as prompt. Yes. So this is a personal challenge that I have given myself on how to truly elevate what I have already done with AI um, and trying to see if I can achieve a completely different result than even my own expectations. Um, I have actually used it with logo design where I start with a sketch and then I bring it in Firefly, I play around with it, I download the sketch, print it, and then sketch it by hand and go crazy with my pencil. So it's kind of crazy that I go from pencil to AI to pencil again, then to scan it back and bring it in Illustrator to have a finished product for my clients. So it's all about experimenting and it's all about seeing what can you add to your creative process, right? Because there is so many options out there and this is basically the beauty of creativity. I really like this here, so I'm going to keep that. So I'm just going to click keep. And there is that tiny little dot here that is just random. And I'm going to click remove understand that and let's wait again and the fun thing with this method as well with starting with a description there you go I'm gonna click keep here is that um I've tried the same prompts over and over again and because it's referencing a different image, it's giving me something that is entirely different, which is really cool. Um, oops, don't want to do that. There you go. If ever you do a mistake like I just did, you can just do clear. So I am going to click download right here and it's going in my download files. So let's go back and continue to make some more. Is there a principle that you would like to see chat um, that we can maybe explore together? Let me just go to YouTube as well, saying hi to everyone on there. Hi, Surgeon. Hi, CJ. Hi, Gus. Nice to see all of you. Okay, so let's do... I think pattern will be interesting with this one. So let's copy paste the definition of pattern. And I have not tried pattern yet. Like I'm taking a risk here. <laughs> We're trying something new on, on Adobe Live, like, but that's okay. This is what we are here to do. Okay, pattern is the repetition of an element. So we can actually remove Actually, let's just try this. Okay, already I'm personally liking what it's giving without even me saying collage, abstract, and I'm loving those little details that we're seeing. So you can be pleasantly surprised with like what, what you can do. Just going to, again, like and download these because they are gorgeous. And just for the fun of it, I want to reference a new image and maybe one that has less unity and is a bit more contrast like this one. It's very much contrast and like 
on balance in the composition. Yeah, the bottom left, you want me to download that one? <laughs> PJ, I will. There you go. Perfect. It's not giving me pattern though, this one. It's giving me a bit more movement, but I can use it for the movement principle. Good call. Mini dance, mini dance. I hope that you're dancing with me when it does this and I'm not the only one. <laughs> Okay, so because there's less element in my reference image, it's actually giving me a pattern that is a bit more sparse and I don't like this. So let's try something else, something that has maybe a lot of colors. Like this one. And generate. So PJ saying, I want Firefly to help me make a specialized coloring book. If you're looking into some whimsical images like we're seeing here, I think that you can definitely start with this um, to begin with and then bring it in Illustrator, use the pen tool or the pencil, or maybe, maybe you have the app on your tablet with the pen. The pen would be super cool as well to use. It would be a bit uh, like a bit more free for you to design it like that um but like it's there is a lot of things that you can start with firefly and it's like a tool that it's just going to and not going to will revolutionize our lives and is actually doing it okay just downloading everything So yes, we can actually edit our images in directly in Firefly. Personally, I love to have the flexibility of Photoshop because there is more tool that is there. So let's bring this into Photoshop and let's see how we can make those images like ready to be added in the zine. Because this is basically the goal of today is to build that image bank. So I'm going to pick an image that I have already done that I absolutely adore. And it's this one here. And this was the result that I got for contrast. And I like that it already looks like a book. So again, that play on composition and decomposition, a zine within a zine is kind of cool but it's cut right here. So I'm going to use the crop tool. Going to make that bigger. And I'm actually going to do the same on the other side to make sure that it's centered. And I'm going with my eye here for the center. It's probably not perfect, but we'll take it. <laughs> I'm taking the selection tool right here selecting that area and then automatically I have the generated fill option that appears. I don't even need to write a prompt for that. It's going to know. So let's generate. And it actually added a section to that paper, which I like. Let's see the other options. I actually like this a lot because it makes, it's like well balanced in within the composition. So I'm going to keep that one, do the same thing on the other side, just generate. The weight. <laughs> And this is pretty good because it has added, if we go and zoom, it has added the texture, the same texture that we have like all around of our funky little composition here. Now, something that screams AI specifically when referencing type is this sort of 
like pattern here. Like it looks like letters and we want to read it like letters, but it's not. And this might be an indicator that it was made with, with AI. So that's okay because we can, again, use a select tool, highlight it, go into generated fill and just say remove, generate, and it's going to remove it. And you can clean up your composition. Oops, that's not what I wanted to do. Apologies for that. Let's go back to Photoshop. But yes, you can definitely clean up your composition with this and making sure that it's all good to go. So here, let's do this again, remove. And I'm curious to know, chat, what do you think about the results? Because personally, I was very impressed because I haven't seen anything like this done with an AI. But is it just me? If I'm crazy, please let me know. And you can definitely call me crazy. I call myself crazy like five times a day minimum. <laughs> okay, so th there is this like scratch here that could make it look like it's real paper, but I don't like it. It's dirty for me. So I'm going to do the same and I'm going to remove. It is such a powerful tool. Before I would use the clone stamp and spend a lot of time cleaning it, but you don't need to do that anymore. This is great. I'm also going to just redo the bottom here because it is doing something funky and just generate that. Definitely not that one, but this one is very clean and I like it. And what I also like with doing the generated fill in Photoshop compared to Firefly is that everything that I have done becomes a layer so you can see it here and you can always go back to your original composition until you merge all of your layers together. Usually what I do before doing that is I keep the layered file and then I have an, a merged file and that's also how I name them in the uh, like in, in my documents and folders. Okay, now this is looking pretty good. I am happy with it, so I'm going to save it. I'm going to just call it edited, layered. And I actually want to keep personally the full naming of <laughs> the file because it's actually the prompt that made it like um, achieve that result at the end. Elizabeth, using the tech muscles today, yes. <laughs> Thank you, definitely. And it's like I said, we are living in this new world where all the possibilities are accessible to us with AI. And there's a lot of different conversations around it. Um, and I had to take a moment and truly think like I, I was always excited about it, um, but take a moment on, okay, how can I use this and leverage my own creativity in a way that has not been done before? And again, as I said earlier, I love to challenge myself. Sometimes I have major headaches because I do so, <laughs> but this is how you get to learn new tricks, just like referencing an image in Adobe Firefly like earlier. And I know like I think this was it's fairly new because I've noticed it just recently. Um, let's do another one just so we can have a look. I have done this one, which this one was focus. Uh, was it focus or emphasis? One or the other. And it's good, but it's I think we can do a lot better with it. So let's edit that. 
as well. So first of all, let's again, take the selection tool and remove the black bars. Remove. I keep hitting my laptop with my mouse and it's clicking where it's not supposed to. <laughs> oh, this is funny. It's adding a full new, there you go, full new design here. Going to do the same here. Actually, I'm gonna start that over because I actually don't want to touch on the end of the circle right here. So this is a little finicky. We, we have it. Remove. And this is easy, but I actually want to go in and then play with the composition within the circle next. But to me, I feel like I can think better if everything around it is clean. And actually, it's not centered which for focus is a little weird, but that's okay. We will go and play within the composition here. So personally having this specific color in this specific shape, I don't know for you, but it makes me think of a sunny side up <laughs> egg and I don't want that. So I'm gonna use here the lasso tool and Oops, it's actually a little outside. The lasso tool gives you the opportunity to just go a bit freely, a bit more, yeah, with your selection. And I still want it to be a focal point. And I want, again, to be um, true to the definition of the prompt that I have put in Firefly. This is going to be a concept for the full zine and how everything kind of makes sense together. So I'm gonna say focal point. I actually wanted black. Let's see what it does with that. Um, and collage style. So this is Okay, actually the black isn't working for me, so let's do something else. Um, maybe let's do purple and orange. Collage style, generate. Yeah, that weight. It didn't understand purple. Oh, well it did here. <laughs> It's funny that it understood that as like separate images, but again, this is kind of the beauty of what it, like AI and what you can do with it. Actually, this does have good balance and it's pretty fun. So now I want to go and change these little details like right here, because that's again, like the, the, like lettering that is being referenced that is all like kind of mushed together. So we can go, basically this is too small. So how are we going to do this? If I do it bigger, maybe? Let's do the selection tool like this. There you go, that works. And we can do just remove. Let's see if it understands like to keep the bars on the side. Maybe not. Actually added some cool, I actually like, like that a lot. Let's see what the others are giving. This one is super cool. It's like, it's like a paintbrush. And what I like too about this specific results is that you may think it's paint, you may think it's collage, but then you're like, what am I looking at? So it's kind of like um, a trompe l'oeil. A trompe l'oeil is something that, um, like ceci n'est pas une pipe. This isn't um, like a smoking pipe from René Magritte. 
this is called a temple. So basically you're like wondering, is it real? Is it not real? Oh, it's a painting. Um, so we're having that effect here, which is kind of fun if we're geeking out about composition and principles and going back to the source. So now I want to just move the bar. You can always move the bar however you please. So sometimes it will go right in the middle of what you're trying to change. And I'm going to select it all here. I'm loving how there's like a big conversation happening in the chat about print right now. And print is everything. It's something that personally I cherish like crazy um, because of the era of the internet. We're not um, using print as much as before. And it's an art. There is so much that you need to like consider when it, like, in a composition when it's printed. Um, when you and also there is that I don't know for you, but for me, whenever I'm seeing my design from digital from a screen to in my hands where I can touch it, the feeling is not the same at all. And it's it's really cool. <clears throat> Even my first business cards, because yes, I used to do business cards. Oh, actually, I don't know what this is. There you go, referencing. Um, used to use business cards before <laughs> when I started my design journey. Um, is business cards still a thing? Let me know. But even seeing that printed for the first time, there was kind of that like feeling and moment that was really cool. Okay, well... This is looking quite good for emphasis and focal point. Actually, there is more of this little. And I actually want to take from this and bring it here. Let's see if I can use the clone stamp for that. So this would be an instance where I would actually save as and do edited and layered because I want to merge everything so I can easily take some bits and pieces with the clone stamp to bring over some of the details. So I'm gonna go to layers. I'm gonna go here with that hamburger menu and I'm just going to go merge visible. And as you can see, everything was put into one. Okay, just going to I don't know if you can see it with the stream, but we're seeing a bit of distortion in the image. That's because I'm at 400% when looking in. It's still going to be okay whenever we print it with the zine. So my clone stamp, I actually want a bit more hardness around the edges. Let's see what that does. And this is a decent size. So I'm going to, oops, press the Alt option select a detail right here and I'm just going to paint and you'll see what I want to do with this after for this one I'm actually going to take it from this little bits here again clone stamp I uh, meant the Alt or Option key on your keyboard. And if I actually zoom out, and if you're new to the clone stamp, you can actually see, you see that little plus sign that is moving as I'm using the clone stamp? That's It's telling me it's taking this specific piece to paint that section. And of course, this is like very rough around the edges, but that's okay because again, we can go back and swoop in with the lasso tool. Let's hope that it's, yes, it's working and generate fill. And we can say, let's see if it understands if I say fix. I don't think, I don't think it's going to work, but let's see. I'm curious. PJ is saying, 
business cards are still a thing and QR codes, that's very true. Um, and it can have all of your information like very quickly with the phones. You're absolutely right. I have not thought about this. Um, whenever I'm thinking about QR codes, I like to think about, it actually removed the whole orange part. So let's do that again. Um, but whenever I'm thinking about QR codes, I'm thinking about ways that could be placed like in a very interesting way. Like if ever I'm going to a conference, I almost want to try to have a QR code on a t-shirt in my back and say, I dare you. And then it's all of my information, like website and email and all that. Um, I think that could be like, a, like I have yet to try this, but I really want to do it. And I'm sure it has been done before. So let's do, I don't like this. So that's okay because we can go back into our layers and just chuck it, delete it, bye-bye, and go back in. And we could say detailed collage orange accents. Let's see if it understands that. Okay, this is a bit more what I want. I like this one here because it's keeping all of the like kind of detail and like ruching from the paper if you want. So I'm gonna keep that one. And I wanna do the same over here. Actually, let's see if it can merge this section all together. And we can maybe say even merge orange and purple details. Generate. And it did this big blob. Okay, I like this, kind of like. So it's kind of, crazy and amazing to me that we have done pretty much everything when mixing both of like Photoshop, um, like collage that is very tactile and we achieved a very different result um, than what it started with. And we can still keep to iterate, iterate, iterate and just have fun with it. Um, let me save this. And for the sake of it, just because I'm going to call this one merged, <laughs> I'm going to merge all of my layers again. So merge visible. And I'm curious to see the resolution because I have not changed anything. So if you go into image, I'm going to do that again, actually, hold on. If you go into image and you go to image size, this is where you can see the resolution. So it's actually 72 DPI, but if in pixel, it's huge. Let's put that in inches. So it's 36 inches by 25. It's going to be big enough for print because we're going to downsize it to probably like an eight and a half by five and a half format. So we're good to go with that. Okay. So let's save this and edit it and we'll call it merged thank you so much for coming pj nice conversations in the chat lovely to have you here okay so we have a bit more time so i'd say let's create another one in firefly let's maybe do maybe a an element let's do Texture, I think texture will be fun. Just seeing this, it's like, it's it's so exciting to me. <laughs> I'm like genuinely a geek when it comes to this. <laughs> um, and actually I wanna reference this same image because it has a lot of different textures and color. And let's see, let's see what it does. Oh, here, actually, this is something that I wanted to mention. I'm not sure quite yet what it does. I have yet to look more into it, but 
you can play here with the visual intensity and the strength. So sometimes I just do it to see what it does. You can't be afraid of trying uh, when it comes to new software. You won't break it. <laughs> Specifically that this one is online, so you won't break it. Okay, so we're not getting texture at all here. So we can actually remove a few words. Texture. Uh, we can say pattern because I feel like with patterns, we can get texture. Maybe we can add metrics. Uh, texture could be like fuzzy, could be rough. And yeah, sometimes you do need to help the AI with the description. Um, actually, rough was already here, so that's perfect. We can keep tactile. I don't know if brackets do anything, to be honest. I don't know if we have figured that out yet. I do know that commas separates and tells kind of the importance, because whatever you put first, I think there is more emphasis on that word um, than whatever comes next. So you're kind of separating the, the content for your, your AI. And there you go. Let's just see what it does. It's still in black and white. I can actually remove this. It's crazy that this was there the whole time, but we still got some color because it's referencing the image right here. So it's giving me <laughs> a frame. Okay, we'll say full, full image. Monica saying, I love in design. Well, Monica, we are going to next stream, which is on January 23rd. We are going to work only in InDesign. Basically, we're going to take all of the images that we have done today to implement it in the zine. So it's going to be a layout stream for the next one. I actually like this for, I mean, it's not texture, but it's definitely pattern. This here could be actually texture. Let me just download that one. Okay, so it's time to wrap up already. It's crazy, we had so much time. So this here, you can see a bit of results that I was able to achieve by following the process that I have shown you today. And again, like you have seen this one already, but this is something else. Um, this one for me was Unity. Um, you might see something else for yourself <laughs> and that's okay. And uh, basically, yeah, I wanted to invite you back for the next show, which is on January 23rd, when we're going to do only in design and like layout. And if you are new to this stream, like I mentioned at the beginning, there is a whole season of creative design and we created a mini zine, um, creative uh, juice, which you can have access within the document, which is in the YouTube uh, description. And follow me on Behance, follow me on Instagram. You can find the handles here. And until next time, and I forgot the, <laughs> I forgot the, um, the draw. So like quick, quick uh, type Firefly and the first one that I see in chat with Firefly will win the wonderful Ottawa Design Club zine that I have announced at the beginning. So one, two, three, go. <laughs> Waiting for that to come in. There's always a bit of a delay between the chat and uh and that, there you go Monica you are the winner for this wonderful zine so thank you so much for watching and until next time bye